Hi, everyone. I'm Kathy Schmitz, Executive Director for the Vilas County Economic Development Corporation. And thank you so much for joining us today for our Lunch and Learn financial resources for your current or new business. And so before we begin, though, I would like to thank Associated Bank for their generous support of this program and their partnership, together with the other corporations featured on our panel today, who also share a key part of our mission to support and grow small business in Vilas County. So here at the VCEDC, we accomplish that through educational and networking program like today, the expertise available through our amazing board of directors, through this office, and through my colleague, the fabulous Mary Sue Drum, who many of you have spoken with. And Mary Sue is our business outreach specialist. With that, now I would like to introduce our panelists. We have Jim Rosenberg, the Regional Economic Development Director with the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. Colleen Beast, the Northeast Regional Project Director with the Wisconsin Women's Business and Initiative Corporation. Kevin Whistler, who is a Senior Vice President and SBA Credit Officer with Incredible Bank. And Ashley Lucas, who is a Vice President, Business Lending Product and program manager with Associated Bank. So what questions then do you have for our speakers? Please put them in the chat and we'll answer your questions right after our panelists' remarks. Now I'd like to introduce our first panelist, Jim Rosenberg. Thanks so much, Kathy. So I'm Jim Rosenberg from the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation and I'm a regional economic development director. I have a seven county area of which Vilas is one. I can't attend all of the board meetings for economic development corporations around my region, but I always attend Vilas counties. And it's been a pretty exciting county over the past few years. They really got out in front before COVID even and thinking about remote workers. And if you look at the census figures between 2010 and 2020, Vilas County had over a 7% increase in population, which is not common in the Northwoods. What's more common across the North is counties with a population that's getting older and that's getting smaller. And so they're doing some things right. And I, I like to think it's because I come to their meetings, but it's not. I come there to learn, not, not to lead. It's a lot of fun to work on successful programs and, and Vilas County Economic Development certainly has one. So I want to talk a little bit about what WEDC is about. Our mission is to strategically deploy financial resources and technical assistance to invest in Wisconsin in order to enhance our assets and opportunities. So really what we're about is trying to build jobs and tax base. And we're in the process right now of doing some strategic planning because we have to really look again at some of our goals. Some of you may remember back when Scott Walker was first running for governor back in 2010, he promised 250,000 new jobs. While he didn't hit that goal, jobs aren't really going to be the kind of metric that we're looking at going forward. Yes, we want everybody to have satisfying, productive, well-paid work. But the fact of the matter is, is we've got a labor shortage in, in our state. And so we need to think about things like automating and AI and what does that have to do with some of our incentives and programs that we do? So we work with small businesses. And, you know, in the past, we didn't work directly with a lot of small businesses. But over the past year and a half or so, we've been involved with the Main Street Bounce Back Program, in which we've given $10,000 grants to businesses that set up in empty commercial space. So they get that little start. And I like to think that was kind of disproportionately helpful to us up here because 10 grand means a whole lot more in Eagle River when you're paying a lease than it does on Straight Street in Madison. And so I think we did pretty well with that. And across the state, I know we helped over 8,200 businesses and it might be a bigger number than that. In the governor's speech last night, he talked about extending that program with another 50 million. And we don't know if it'll happen yet, but if it does, keep your ear to the ground because that'll be one of the few chances you get to work directly on a grant for a small business. We do a lot of work through our partners 
And the main partners we have are our regional economic development entity. So in our area here, we've got Grow North, there's New North in Northeastern Wisconsin, Center G in Central Wisconsin and others. And so those are the ones that we help them with in a, in a budget way. And I know Kathy wishes we'd do that in a, in a way with, uh, uh, with Violence County too, but if we did all 72 counties, I don't know if we'd have anything left of an agency budget for ourselves. We also uh, work with SCORE, and I don't know that Vilas County necessarily has a formal service corps of retired executives, but I know they've got some retired executives that perform the same function. So if you want some wise counsel, she's got some very successful business people on the board, and they love to help people, and they've done that. So make use of that resource of your your county economic development corporation. So working with small businesses, we have brownfield and site assessment grants, and this cleans up a lot of the old gas stations and dry cleaning joints and things like that. And we work with communities on those applications. We've done some pretty good sized grants. And the biggest one I've done was over in Marinette, which was a brownfields grant that went to prepare a site for housing. And they've got a high housing situation over there that won't quit because of Marinette Marine trying to hire 500 to 1,000 new people. But in any case, we were able to provide a half a million dollars. And yes, some of that went to cleaning up the site, but sometimes Brownfields grants can do things like paving, which becomes your cap. Historic preservation tax credit. I know we did one for the Eagle River Ice Arena, which is definitely historic. We've got the Kiva Loan Program, which works through some of the Main Street programs. Then we've got various other programs. I like it when people call me up with questions. I'm happy to answer them. I also want to talk a little bit about global trade and investment because we have a part of our WEDC staff that works with international. And our biggest trade partner is Canada, of course, which is kind of close by for us. In March, we'll be doing a trade mission up there. And they set up appointments and things like that for people. The businesses pay something to participate, but it's a heavily subsidized program. So one of the questions I don't so much like getting is people like to call me up and say, have you got any grants? And it's like, what I want to know is what are you doing? What is your plan? And what's the gap that would be filled with a grant versus just people sort of fishing around for money? Because we're not really here to just hand out participation trophies. We're here to make things happen. So that means get a hold of us. We work with communities that do building renovations and things like that and all kinds of programs. So I'm going to hop off because I want to give the other people their fair amount of time. Feel free to give me a call anytime, even if it's not something we do. I might know somebody that does. All of us in the economic development biz are very well networked. So we're working with the SBA, with the county groups, with the regional. If you want to do something and you want some advice, we're here to help you. Great. Thank you so much, Jim. So now I'd like to uh, turn it over to Colleen Beast. She is the Northeast Regional Project Director for the Wisconsin Women's Business Initiative Corporation, or as we refer to it as WIBIC. I hope you can hear me okay. I almost made it to my destination, but didn't quite make it, so I'm pulled over. So I wanted to talk about some of the financial resources that WIBIC offers. Also want to emphasize that while we do have women in our name, it does not mean that we only serve women. So we serve women, minorities, people of low wealth, low income, and veterans. So really a wide range of folks. And even if they don't fit in those categories, one of the other categories we serve is really anyone that also has historically had problems accessing capital. So getting a loan or something. So even if they're not in one of the underserved categories, maybe they've had history of, you know, not being able to get a loan in the past or whatnot. So really, when I say we serve all people, we genuinely do serve all people. So some of the financial capabilities that we offer, just like Jim said, you know, we sometimes we get that question too a lot where people come to us and say, hey, do you have any grants for us, right? You know, and, and so much of that is with the pandemic and everything that's happened, it's gotten more common for people to believe that grants are just readily available all the time, but historically not the case. Grants are very few and far between. So what we do is we provide a lot of access to capital in the untraditional ways. So when I say that, I mean loans in ways that are not a typical bank loan. 
we have a lot of bank partners that we work with and whatnot, but sometimes as an entrepreneur, as a small business owner, you might go into a bank and you, you might not fit all the boxes that the bank needs in order to give you a business loan. So we have, um, I say we have like three tiers of loans. So our first tier, and Jim mentioned it too, Kiva. So we're a Kiva hub. And if you've never heard of Kiva before, think of it like a GoFundMe account, but instead of people donating you money for some cause or event, they're loaning you money in order to get you a 0% loan. So these are nano loans. So they're from $1,000 to $15,000, 0% interest. And it's crowdsourced, so crowdfunded. Essentially, you're basically going out to your community, going out to the public, and it is worldwide. So it is a worldwide program. You can say, hey, I need a loan for $5,000. I just need to buy a couple pieces of equipment to get me through because my machine broke or whatever. Maybe you're not looking for that much money that you need like a big, big loan or it doesn't make sense to go to a bank, but you need something. A Kiva loan is really great because you go out there and you say, hey, Jim, can you loan me $25? Hey, Karen, can you loan me $25? Say, Ashley, can you loan me $25? So you're really asking for everyone to basically take a part in your business and be an investor in you as a person and in your business. And you pay it back incrementally between 12 months and 36 months. And again, it's 0% interest. And especially if you're a small business owner that's just kind of starting your business and you're not really sure where to go yet and you need just a little bit of capital to get you going, this is a really great way to get you started in your business and it gives your business a way to start to build credit because there's always that like well how do I get credit if I don't have credit but I can't get a loan if I don't have credit and I can't get a loan because I don't have credit or whatever so this is a great avenue Kiva is a great avenue for you to get some of that credit and build your credibility as a business owner as someone that's trying to get a loan so that way in the future if you want to do something really big with your business you can get approved for a traditional loan and if you still aren't able to get approved for a traditional loan, then we have other loan programs. So our second loan program is our veteran loan fund. So because we work with veterans a lot, we have a veteran business outreach center that's attached to Lubick. And with the veteran loan fund, it's loans up to $25,000, slightly better interest rate. So it's um, around right now, currently around like seven, some change for interest rate. It's up to $25,000 again for veterans and veteran spouses. And if someone needs more than that, obviously we have our regular Wibic loan too. So our regular Wibic loan is anywhere from $1,000 up to $350,000. So it's really great. We always say if someone is wanting a small business loan, if they're bankable, like if you can walk into a bank and you have enough collateral, if you have enough credit history, if you, your business is existing, we say, please go to a regular bank and get a loan that way. But it's really for the startups, the new business owners, people that have maybe had had trouble whether or not they had a bankruptcy in the past or something like that, that has really hurt their credit score where they can't go to a traditional bank, they'll come to us. Those loans, again, are up to $350,000, a little bit of a higher interest rate, just because as a community development financial institution, we have to borrow that money. So we have to borrow it and then we loan it out. That's the reason why it's a little bit higher. But anyone that gets a loan through Wibic, one of the benefits is that we also have what we call our small business consultants. So they kind of live with you throughout the life of your loan and they check in with you about once a month, sometimes more often than not. It just depends on like who you are and what, how much support you need. But basically they sit there once a month at least and they say, hey, how's it going? How's your business? How are you tracking? How are your financials? Are you doing well? Do you need help? Do you need advice? Where, where do you need resources or help? And so they're really kind of like your one-on-one -on -one mentor and coach that lives with you for the life of the loan to just make sure that you're on track. If there's any help that you need, if there's any other services that you need, if there's any other education that we can provide you, we do that. And that's just part of our like wraparound services to make sure that holistically, you are set in your business. You are successful in your business. We have a 97% payback rate. And we also take the most risky loans too. It just really says a lot to like our history and what we do. And the idea is we want to graduate people, right? So we want everyone to graduate if they can't get a bank loan because they're not bankable. Once they come to Lubbock and they get a loan, after a couple of years and they've built that credibility and they started to really establish their business and now a bank will take them and will give them a loan, then we say, perfect, go to a traditional bank, get the loan, pay off this loan, 
get that lower interest rate and then run your business from there. We don't want to keep them here forever. We, we do want them to graduate into a bankable area where they can financially be better off and be able to run their business and establish that. We love our bank partners because then we know that we have a resource to send them to. And especially if a traditional bank says, no, we can't use them, then they can refer them to us. And then we can try to help someone out, help them make their dreams come true. We had a woman that came in and she wanted to start a business in the middle of the pandemic, a restaurant style, cafe style business. She had the best business plan you could ever. It was like a 60 page full out, beautiful all the financials, like gorgeously laid out business plan, but she didn't have any business experience. She had never owned a small business before. This was a dream of her. She studied, she did the research. She didn't have any collateral. She went into 10 different institutions and every single bank said, you have the best business plan we've ever seen, but we cannot give you a loan. Then she came to Wibbick and Wibbick said, yes, absolutely. Let's get you started. And she's been in business for seven months now and is doing fantastic. Those are the kinds of folks that we work with. It's, we'll take a chance on you if you're willing to work in your business. And then as soon as you're ready to graduate from us and join everyone else or whatnot, you're welcome to do so. so those are our three kind of avenues of financial resources that Wibbick offers. On top of all of our educational resources, we also do a lot of free classes too with education and training in small business ownership, whether it's starting or maintaining or growing your business. And those are all the things, but outside of that, the three things is start with a Kiva loan, which is very low risk, no interest, gets you going. If you're able to do the veteran loan fund, that's great. If not, then you can go right into the Wibbeck loan and kind of start growing your business from there. But I think my time is already up, so I will let the next person speak, and then I'll take questions when we have questions later. Great. Thank you so much, Colleen. And then I think you can already all see how interconnected all of these organizations are to help people. And that's what we're all about here, networking, as well as providing information. On to our next panelist, which is Kevin Whistler. And Kevin is the Senior Vice President, SBA Credit Officer with Incredible Bank. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, Kevin Whistler, Incredible Bank, as Kathy has stated. So just a little background. I've been in the banking industry for over 25 years. Most of my focus has been holding roles, as I look at it, from different aspects, but supporting small businesses throughout the lending process. Kind of worked on the end of origination, kind of a portfolio management side of it, seen the, what they call the bad side of it, too, as well throughout my career. So I'm working with different sizes of businesses, kind of conventionally in SBA, uh, with Incredible Bank uh, as a credit officer, kind of oversee the part where, you know, when a customer's coming to us and looking for a loan request and on the business side, looking for a loan, PERP has a loan request, got a package together. I work with the underwriters, kind of oversee our underwriters on reviewing that information. Um, and, and it's not a matter of just initial, sometimes on that request, it works out. You know, sometimes we need to kind of go back, see what's the best option, what's the best request for that customer. And, you know, when we work out on the portfolio side, uh, we do, as we get to the end, you book a loan, you put it on the books, then we've got the portfolio side and that's taking care of the customers. So, you know, businesses have changed, especially on the SBA side. And we'll, we're going to talk about that here coming up. That's uh, kind of my focus product of this call, but on the SBA side, but taking care of the customers is important. So we have a portfolio management team that kind of operates oversee with the relationship management piece that helps out on that side. So kind of a little background on myself and what I'm doing today. Quick intro on Incredible Bank. So Incredible Bank was started back in 1967. Um, it's actually privately owned. It's owned by a family, still owned by the same family. Started out with one branch in Wisconsin, and over the years we've grown to 17 branches throughout Wisconsin and up into Michigan. Something new for us is currently under construction. Uh, we actually have a Florida expansion and how that kind of ties a little bit to myself is I am remote and I do work down here in Florida, but right now I'm down in the Southwest part of Florida and we are working on a building a center there that's going to be able to offer all products and services to kind of support. So kind of expand our brand a little bit. So what I'm going to focus on today, just given some background, and talking about is kind of the overall SBA loan programs for borrowers. We do have a department here. Um, we kind of have a unique model. We do have a platform definitely within the Wisconsin areas. Um, it is a national platform and we do have the ability and the resources to support this nationally. But the SBA program, pretty popular program for small businesses. I think early small businesses kind of up and running. 
with some years other operations, even some new businesses kind of getting up and running. But the SBA program is a great opportunity. A lot of times, I think I have Colleen say that her group, they kind of graduate to banking products. We usually use the SBA program as something to graduate. I got a government loan program that allows you to graduate the more traditional, conventional small business lending through the bank. So the, that SBA program is a good stepping stone for that. Two main programs. Um, the most common one is the 7A loans. By far, the most common program for the SBA across the country for small businesses. This can be used for real estate purchases. Um, you can refinance current debt. That can be existing debt. It could be existing equipment loans, working capital loans, even real estate loans. We also kind of, this is a little bit of uniqueness that you don't see in the traditional is you have business acquisitions and partner buyouts. SBA does have a loan product that helps support that. Short-term, long-term working capital, operating capital. That's another kind of typically something that's whether it's hiring, marketing, supplies for the business. Um, the SBA does have programs that fall within that that support. Loan amounts typically range from $25,000 up to $5 million. And then within those loan ranges, the program's kind of broken up and got a kind of a, a large kind of traditional SBA. And then they also have a smaller loan program. Three hundred fifty and less falls underneath kind of their smaller loan program. And that's usually typically where we fall. We see the, the kind of the working capital, kind of some startups, equipment purchases. And then on the larger side, you, know, you may see kind of the acquisitions in the real estate typically fall. With that smaller loan program, what's nice about it, what's attractive about it with some small business, especially some businesses that are getting started, or just, you know, even just need kind of a smaller need um, on that. There's kind of, there's less with, with the SBA has, because there's kind of two policies. The SBA has their policy, banks have their policy. And within the SBA policy to be eligible, there, there are less credit and document requirements. Makes it a little bit easier, a little bit more streamlined and helps lenders. You know, like I say, we're trying to get this capital out into our small businesses. It makes it a little bit easier for us on the smaller side. Some additional programs within the SBA, um, they do have what's called an SBA Express. They have loans and lines, typically falls on the smaller side. These are up to 500,000. They have a micro loan program. This is up to 50,000. And then as well as um, for exporters, if you do any type of international business, you know, domestic location with international business, they have an actual an export loan program as well. On the 504 side, so not as common. So this may be definitely some of the folks listening today um, 504 is not as popular, but because they do have a little bit of limited uses, what's you know eligible for using this program. But this is a partnership between a lender and what's called you know an agency that's with the SBA. And as you can see, I put on here kind of, kind of examples which you would use this program for. Typically, they fall on the larger side for loan request, but this is when you're looking to finance kind of that a large fixed asset, a piece of real estate or a long-term machinery equipment is typically what this program would be used for. A little bit of the complexity, it does have a structure where with a lender's partnership, the lender will take a first position, like 50%. So you look at the project, the lender's about 50%. Then you got the 40% is the SBA agency. And then there's a, the 10% you see on here is the actual down payment you know, that we collect as a part of the project. So benefits and eligibility, I think these are the key things here to kind of understand what's attractive about an SBA loan. We'll start off with the benefits. Competitive terms and longer terms. For the most part, in a real estate transaction, you're going to get up to 25 years on the term. Really not common, balloons. You don't see balloons. Typically, these are going to be fully amortizing loans. In this case, you know, if we're talking about a real estate loan, up to 25 years. I think where the competitive piece really comes in is when you're like a non-real estate loan. So this is our working capital, startup cost, um, you know, for debt refinance, equipment loan, along those lines, the term is up to 10 years. So in, the, you know, in these cases, you know, not collateral dependent. So you have up to 10 years versus conventionally, you know, you may be in more in that three to five year space. So it really helps out on the repayment terms, makes it attractive for a small business. SBA space also, lower down payments for sure. Um, you know, some projects, depending on what, what your loan purpose is, up to 10% down payment. But in a lot of cases, um, depending what your loan purpose is, especially in the smaller loan program and on some of the you know, non-real estate or non-acquisition loan purposes, you're not required to put a down payment down. So it allows you to kind of have an option for 100% financing and kind of hold that cash back for reserves. Collateral, the SBA, they're, you know, depending on that loan purpose, you know, some cases, yep, collateral, there's some requ collateral requirements, but there's also situations that collateral is not required. So typically in a conventional situation, you know, that collateral requirement could be a part of that overall credit decision 
But an SBA program, there are options there that you don't have to be collateral de dependent to get a potential credit approval for the loan purpose. And then just in general, I think from a, an overall reason for the SBA program that it's a government guaranteed product, it allows lenders, you know, we look at these different loan requests and the transactions, and we're allowed to kind of, you know, be a little bit, take a little bit more risk from a credit requirements, you know, whether you have the credit or the long years of experience. Or, you know, from a financial perspective, if you're looking kind of at the balance sheet, you know, some of those things in the SBA space, we can lower those requirements, knowing that, you know, from an eligibility standpoint, that we have a guarantee to help support that loan, get capital out to our small business owners. And then another, I, I consider this a benefit to this franchise. You know, if you got small business owners out there that are interested in getting into a franchise, whether it's, you know, buying an existing franchise or, you know, starting up a new franchise. Um, the SBA has a great program to help out with lending with those starting, you know, getting the project up and running and the st startup costs. So with anything with the government, yes, there's some eligibility. There are some rules there around the eligibility that we need to make sure we're following to be eligible for this program. You got to be for profit business on um, nonprofits, um, at least at this point in time is not el eligible for SBA lending. Do business in the U.S., uh, a U.S. government program and I guess the reason I'm passionate about the program, I mean, this is a loan program that, you know, everyone's hard earned, you know, the tax dollars that go into this support this program. So doing business domestically, you know, and having the U.S. jobs, maintaining jobs as well as job creation. One other piece, have invested equity. So it's kind of a, sometimes a little bit of what the SBA asks for is, you know, a little bit of time and money. And that kind of falls into if there's a requirement for that down payment that has to be going to that project, but doesn't fall into every situation. Meet the SBA's size standards. So it's nice. The program's kind of protected. It's protected and it's really built for the small business owners across the country and not just large corporations or large. And I would even kind of put in there, you know, just ultra rich kind of businesses that have strong balance sheets when it comes to liquidity that pretty much they do have options. You know, these are businesses and corporations that have options for other, you know, to get lending, borrowing needs. The SBA does protect that with a size standard. So depending on what industry you're in, there's set size standard that may meet requirements based on like maximum revenue, as well as number of employees, just to kind of help make sure that this program is going out, you know, to the right users, which I think true definition of a small business who needs capital. Business industries, there are some business industries that are not eligible, um, not to go into too much detail there, and then in source of revenue as well. So in the case of how you generate your revenue, but something that kind of, you know, falls out that typically um, we, you know, you would know kind of up more upfront. One of the last things I have written down here is kind of the character and ownership. You know, there's some due diligence, but the SBA program kind of gives us, I mean, some folks might think, oh, I had a bankruptcy, one bankruptcy, you know, so many years ago, or potentially may have had a foreclosure. Um, there are processes within the program that are supported that you can kind of work and make exceptions on some of those past dealings. I kind of want to end, you know, a lot of people, you know, sometimes business owners sometimes get scared when they hear government loan program, government guaranteed loan. And, but she's got to understand, I think it, it is, comes down to the right lender. Um, the lenders, you know, they've got the right SBA department. They got the right teams. They know how to utilize the program. They're there for the support. There's some extra documents that are coming to play, but, you know, with, like I said, working with the right team, they should be there to help support and get you kind of work through it and help, you know, find what the right need is for you. Great, Kevin, thank you so much. I'm gonna turn it over to Ashley Lucas, who is a vice president and a business lending product and program manager with Associated Bank. Thank you, Kathy. I am super excited to be here today because you guys have such a great program in Vilas County. And I wanna share what we've been doing at Associated Bank for small businesses. So I am the vice president of business lending product and program manager. I handle all of our business lending under a million dollars, and that starts really with $5,000 with those businesses that have just been in business a couple of years, and sometimes less than that. I'm really passionate about this because the great thing about small businesses is that there's always a story and a passion with the owner of the business, and you really get to meet them and get to know how that all started. And I think that's why I love my job, and I love being on calls like this, um, because we are able to provide solutions for that. So who is Associated Bank and why are we here today? Some of you have probably seen us around. We are the largest bank in Wisconsin and our footprint is really the Midwest. Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Illinois is really where our main representation is. And something unique this year that I wanna talk about is 
starting last year, we put together a small business relationship management team. And this is something that we really found within, you know, our footprint, a lot of banks weren't doing. We have a lot of small businesses in our portfolio, but are there relationship managers who are helping these businesses with less than $500,000 of annual sales? So we now have a dedicated group of small business relationship managers around our footprint that will help any small business through the life cycle of their business you know, from the start of their business, getting their checking account set up to a business acquisition or to retiring. And that's really changed the way that Associated Bank has looked at helping their small businesses. Something else that's really unique is now all of our branch managers are business certified. So they specifically go through training and a process to be able to help small businesses and the needs and the benefits and what they're learning is very specific to businesses that have less than $3 million in annual sales. And that starts all the way up from startups. So we've really changed that outlook. And we're not just helping the large corporations or maybe the larger businesses, but we want to help those local owners because that's really who we are too. We are a local bank and we want to be able to help those people. Other things to just notice here, we have a great physical representation. We really enhanced our online and ease of use for our business customers. I don't know about you guys, but the pandemic has definitely changed how I do a lot of my business. So grocery shopping is great, but also getting them to my door from Amazon in my pajamas is really fun too. Um, And I think that's what we want to cater to as well. Small business owners are busy. A lot of times it's just that one small business owner, that one employee, or maybe they have a couple other ones. They don't have time to stop in the bank for a couple hours or meet with somebody. So we really leveraged whether that's mobile banking, online banking, or our technology to make sure that businesses can complete their transactions or get their needs completed either over the phone or online. One of the hot topics I want to talk about today, um, and it's come up a lot, is you know the need for working capital, especially when it comes to small businesses. But I think one thing that we really noticed especially, I know nobody wants to talk about the pandemic anymore, but is the need for all small business owners to have some type of plan B. So what really happened with PPP in the pandemic is uh, businesses were really scrambling to get a PPP loan. And we certainly don't want that to be the case moving forward. So why is this something that we always stress to our business clients? Well, the importance is, is that a line of credit can be virtually used for anything. And when you're a small business and you're growing and expanding, there are so many unexpected either purchases or needs that come out throughout that life cycle of your business growing. What's also really nice about a line of credit is you can draw from it and you can pay just interest until you're ready to pay a larger sum back. And that's really important when you're expanding. In order to make money, you need to spend money. And one of the number one obstacles that we hear from our business clients is I can't grow because I don't have the liquidity or capital to do that. So why does a business lean a line of credit? Purchasing inventory or slow times in their seasonal business. A lot of our retail stores, they want to purchase that bulk inventory before their holiday season in the Christmas. Um, It's important that they're purchasing that inventory in the summer months. So when Christmas comes, they have that inventory. They're not going to be able to pay that back until December, January, and that's okay. Meeting payroll and hiring more staff, uh, marketing efforts, any leasehold improvements or gaps in cash flow. And the number one reason I'm putting this on here, I don't want to say emergency funds, but I always tell people, hey, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. You know, wherever you bank or whatever your organization you're from, talk to your business clients or think about yourself. Do I have a plan B, whether that's a savings, a line of credit, a credit card, in case an unexpected purchase comes up? This is a great opportunity at the start of 2023 to talk to your relationship manager, your banker, your accountant, or start searching online for opportunities or some type of line of credit or working capital. On the next slide, I'm going to talk about some of the solutions that we have for our small business clients today. So one thing that we noticed is for small business clients to obtain a line of credit or a term loan, it was really difficult because a lot of these businesses, you know, haven't been in business for a long time. And Associated Bank really wanted to change that. Starting a couple of years ago, we rolled out something called FlexLend. And like I said, our technology is a really big thing that we wanted to change for our small business clients. 
and this fits just into that. So we now have an online application portal. It literally takes five minutes to fill out where all we require customers or non-customers to provide is three months of bank statements for the entire application process. So not just for the application and underwriting, but all the way through closing and booking. And that's really important for a new business that might not have those tax returns uh, to provide yet. What's also really, really cool is we have four different avenues for approval. So we're not just looking for a conventional approval, but we also have an SBA counter offer, um, which we heard Kevin talk about a lot too. And we are actually a preferred SBA lender in the state of Wisconsin. Two new things came out that we're, I'm really excited to talk to you about um, that we're doing this year. One, we are about a month out of launch our new community uplift loan program, which is special credit criteria for any business that self-identifies as a minority and women-owned business. We're not asking them to provide a certification as long as they self-identify and click yes they will go through special criteria, more relaxed credit policy for loans and lines, five to $50,000. And the best part is they are going to get the same interest rate. They're going to go through the same process as a conventional approval. So if a minority owned business comes in and they click yes, they're still going to be approved and funded with our average life cycle time of six days. They're going to have that $50,000 in their account if they want. And that's absolutely great. Now, I've heard Colleen talk about it. I think Jim talked about it. We have a lot of clients that come in. You know, maybe they did have a bankruptcy. Maybe they had a couple delinquent loan payments. Or maybe, you know, something happened in the past few years where their credit isn't where they'd like it to be. We also have a program. It's called our Foundation Second Look Program, where if a customer is not approved for conventional SBA or the Community Uplift Program, we do work with our partners at Foundation to see if we can provide another approval. With this program last year, which was kind of our first year of having it live, we had 66 approvals without marketing this initiative for about $2.2 million given out. For somebody that comes in and their credit scores in the 500s, paying an increased interest rate of 12 to 13% is really important if they're able to get a $100,000 term loan to complete the leasehold improvements on their roof or their building and whatnot. And that's been really important to us. So I think really what I want to tell you guys here is we have a lot of different options for lending opportunities, and we have resources available, whether that's our small business relationship team, our branch managers, or if you guys are like me, like I talk, talked about getting my groceries in my pajamas, we do have a phone number right there below that you can call our virtual relationship managers we can connect with you from eight to five. Monday through Friday, and they'll walk you through our process and give you solutions, whether that's just talking about a checking account, payroll, cash flow gaps, or a loan opportunity. It's kind of cool to call and just get somebody that's able to give you that advice right away, whether you're a customer or not. So with that, uh, Kathy, I think I'll pass it back to you. If anybody has any questions, you're part of an organization and you'd love me to present solutions, or you just have questions and want to say hi, shoot me an email, give me a call. I love to talk about small business. It's my passion and I'd be happy to help. Thank you. Great. Great. Ashley, thank you so much. And I completely agree with you that from shopping online in your pajamas to Amazon or your grocery store is absolutely the best. So I don't know that that's ever going to change again. So everybody, in the last 10 to 15 minutes that we have left, we're here for you to share the information from our, our expert panelists, but also we want your questions. Please feel free to start putting them in the chat. And my colleague, Mary Sue who I mentioned, our business outreach specialist, will go through them for us. We'll go one by one. I know that there was one person who could not attend today and, and sent some in already, but we'll try to get through all of these. And if we don't, please feel free always. I'm here. Mary Sue's here. We have a whole team here that will, um, from our board, that we can help answer questions. And then obviously, questions for any of our panelists, we will get you their contact information. So let's start with the questions in the last remaining minutes, Mary. So what do we have? First question reads, is there a special financial assistance for entities who benefit the communities, more specifically for B Corp structure businesses? Who wants to take that? What I would say um, to that question is we can fund a B, B Corp structure businesses. Sometimes audited financials are required. If somebody does have that need, just reach out to me and I can get more specifics 
but typically on any loans with Associated Bank under $250,000, we're not requiring verification of what the use of funds are. So that typically means more that generic use that this might be a good program for. So whoever is asking that, just let me know. Um, and I'd be happy to get you to the right person at Associated Bank. Okay, thank, thanks a lot, Ashley. That's a great question. Uh, another question, second question. Is there financial assistance that covers health insurance coverage for entrepreneurs and their immediate families? A legal fund to set up the entity, fund to help transition to the new career, initial marketing fund to build their brand, resources to fund equipment, et cetera. In general, a fund that covers basic expenses for the founder or the founding team. Who wants to take that one on? So I think for us at Wizard, our focus, we do help a lot of startup business owners. So a lot of this is part of the startup expenses for a new business. I wouldn't say that it would cover any health insurance coverage though for them, but definitely a lot of folks that use us will use us to fund their business when they start, whether or not it's a restaurant and they're trying to fund equipment purchases so that way they can get the doors open um, or fund a marketing campaign so that way they can make, bring awareness or whatnot. So that is all part of the funding options um, and that's kind of what it is. But most of our funding, when we look into approving someone for a loan and funding them, we're looking for what's in the business that's actually going to make the business move and create cash flow. So anything that's creating that, whether it's putting product, buying inventory, working capital, um, equipment purchases, things that will get the business moving. And I'm sure there's other people that can answer that question differently too. Okay, thank you, Colleen. Mary Sue, I think we have another one. Yeah, we have one, one more. It's from Christine and she wants to know, is pre-approval for funds an option? Yes, so this is one thing that our customers love with FlexFund is we don't require invoices, purchase agreements. Like let's say you want to buy a vehicle for your business and you don't know how much you qualify for. I mean, that's a really big question, especially with newer businesses or small businesses. They don't know. We don't require that for underwriting and we actually don't even require it for closing. We just put the funds in your account. So we have a lot of customers that come to us and say, I'm looking at around 50,000, but I don't know what I'd be approved for. Sometimes we'll come back for a, with a counter saying, well, you were actually approved for 42,000 and then they're able to go and look for a vehicle. And that pre-approval is good for 90 days. If it does go over 90 days, the reason it's only 90 days is because we have to pull credit. But typically if somebody comes with us, they, they can usually find something within three months that they're looking for. Great question. Great, thank you, Ashley. Anyone else have a question for any of our panelists? Hi, this is Ruby Gott here. The first couple of questions actually came from me and I'm much more um, interested with that uh, B Corps structure. If anybody can, like someone from the panel, could expand on some potential opportunities for B Corps structure businesses that benefits the whole community or like in general nationwide, for instance. For me specifically, I, I would have to take it offline and get more details from you, but I'll let anyone else answer if um, they have anything they want to add. Thanks for that, Ruby. And yes, I'll connect you with Ashley to delve into that a little further. And I think one of the great things that's happened with the Main Street bounce back grants that we're all aware of, you know, across the state, and at least for us in Vilas County, there have been so many new businesses that have opened and or expanded. And so that really provides an opportunity for all of those business owners and for us to back out to them and say, again, so great that you've done this. And so how's it going? And can we help you with anything? Did you find out after opening, you needed that another piece of equipment or you needed a, a car for delivery or you needed some marketing help or whatever? And Mary Sue and I are going to be doing that. So that provides a great opportunity then that we can then hopefully follow back with you and then all of your colleagues that you have as well, the resources that that Jim had mentioned too. We have another question, Kathy, and it's from Emily. Emily asks, at what point does this business credit stand alone rather than the individual partner's owners? Thinking specifically about small lines or business credit cards. Typically on small business lines, specifically, an owner has to guarantee the line of credit. So the guarantor 
you know, a small business is saying, hey, if the small business can't pay it back, I personally guarantee that that I'm going to pay the loan back or I'm going to pay the line back. Business credit cards sometimes have guarantors and sometimes they don't. I would say 95% of the time for small business lines of credit, there's always going to be a guarantor. And typically that's because the lines of credit have larger commitments, dollars than a business credit card. Business credit cards are just going to depend on the vendor. So wherever you go, if they require a personal owner to guarantee, but I would say for a business line of credit, those almost always do in small business. We also require a personal guarantee for all of our loans as well. And one add on to that, just the importance of the personal guarantee is, you know, the por- the personal side of it, I think when you have, when you're working with a, a business as well as the personal guarantee, and in cases where there, you may come across some, you know, a delinquency or something, a lot of times you can use whether a mitigate, a strong mitigate on the business side or the individual side, you can kind of use that to kind of offset to help get that approval for you versus just relying on the business itself. Um, and not having the personal guarantors a part of it. Great. Thank you, all of you, again. um, I think with the remaining minutes that we have, if there aren't any other questions, which I don't see any, I I think we'll just, we'll wrap up here for today. My special thanks on behalf of our team here, Mary Sue and Tracy, who's been helping me behind the scenes here today. Thank you, Jim and Ashley, Kevin and Colleen. we're, We're most appreciative. Thank you. Clearly, this was a very popular program for us. And so our next Lunch and Learn is entitled Attracting Today's Tourists to Your Business. And that will be held at noon on February 22nd. And so watch for more information on that. And so with that, I'll just again thank all of you for joining us. Have a great day. Thanks again.